Hopefully. One day we was chilling on the street called 23rd. <laughs> we all grew up together. We all Crips, right? All our homies came down here, like from California, anywhere. They came down here and got with us. Yeah. They joined yeah, with us. Yeah, that's right. You know, and everybody just turned Crip. I believe the gang scene first started in Little Rock for money. You can get a half ounce in LA for about five hundred. Out here you can sell it for a thousand. We make it motherfucking money, cuz I came in Little Rock in eighty seven. It was like if Clint Eastwood would have came out here, they would just want to be like Dirty Harry. You know, so I was just something new to him. And they gave me that much more respect. They gave, they wanted to be like me. All right, I'm Yashika. I'm a girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? And what I feel about him, he's straight, I <laughs> guess. Mo nah, I'm not more bitch. I'm more <laughs> girl, you know what I'm saying? Keep that on camera, too. <laughs> we got much love for my We got much love for my Much love, Not my motherfucker, dude. When I started me game banging was my, everybody else in my family was game banging. I liked it, though, how people used to look up towards my father and my brothers and stuff. One day... Uh, my father was out there waiting with a few of the homies, and I was inside the pool on the gate. And uh, I, don't, I can't exactly who say who did it, but I know they drove up, got out the car with the rags tied on their head, and shot my father, shot my sister, and shot another one of the little homeboys right there while we was watching. There was nothing we can do because none of us had guns. We were just all ready to get, to get our fight on. But they shot him, and after that, it was just home. Mo. How did I meet him? I was walking down the street and shit, and he stopped me and started talking to me. And we just hooked up like that, you know? I was going to school and shit. I wasn't fucked up about gang banging. I didn't know nothing about gang banging. He was gang banging, and what they was doing looked fun to me. You know what I'm saying? They was cripping and shit, and they had cars and money and this and that, and they was out on their own, you know? So shit, I wanted to do that kind of shit. So I got into winning and got out on my own and started hustling. And now I got everything I want and shit. You say you got everything you want. What is that? What do you have? Everything. What's everything? I got a house. I got three cars. I got money in my pocket. Everything I want. But you, how old are you? 17. I feel like I'm too hard to die, man. I feel like I can't see faded, you know. I feel like can't no nigga fade me. I feel like I'm the hardest nigga walk the earth and shit, you know what I'm saying? Be a crib house, right there. Does it? Does it? This would be a drug house too. I know. I used to live on a bus. Maybe I've been hearing gunshots all the time. And I know some of them have been caught. I think I was about nine. Somewhere about nine. At first, I had a gauge. I couldn't shoot the gauge. Too big. They gave. I think Kato gave me a nine, but it was too big. So I think it was Ray Rat. Ray Rat hold my hands up. He let me aim it. Planted whoever I wanted to get, and he just hold my hand and let me get busy, and just told me to pull the trigger when I'm ready. And I did exactly what I did: pull the trigger. You were nine years old and you were killing people. How did you feel about that as a nine-year-old boy? At that time, I have I ain't know no better. I ain't had no remorse. I thought that was a thing to do. From everybody telling me that's the thing to do. So if you if somebody keep telling you that's what you're supposed to do, that's what you just that's all you do. Just kill. Y'all don't experience it like this. Y'all homies, y'all kick it with every day. Y'all sitting in the house. And y'all oh, homies just get smoked and his brains just laying on the couch. You know what I'm saying? Y'all in there shooting dice, playing cards and shit. Your homie get smoked. What y'all want to do, you know? We're going to go back and get the person who smoked our homie. You know what I'm saying? It's a little L.A. out here now. From when I first got out here, it was real country. They'll fight every on the weekends or... But they'll be friends again that, that coming Monday. Now, they don't fight no more. They're killing each other. They don't even waste no time in arguing. They just go out and just shooting. Tell you the truth, 
it's gonna be some motherfuckers die. It's gonna be some motherfuckers get scared and get out of it. But it, in this motherfucker, with the motherfucking Crips, ain't nobody getting out. Ain't nobody getting out. Can't nobody get out once you in. Once you in, the only way you getting out is if you die out. If you can't, if you don't die out, you not out. Dude's you can't, you, cause most of the most of the uh, crips and shit, they get in a, in a set, they get they, they get that set branded on them. You know for what I'm life, saying? Good, for life, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they can't good. get out. They gotta die out. Well, stay crip. Twenty third. When did you do? When did you do that? About two hours ago. And how does it feel? It feels straight crip. I don't say a ten. I did. It don't hurt. It don't hurt. You know, you drink, you drink a forty. You know, you straight your buzz and shit. You straight. You could have said that boy that said smoke a 20 seconds. And why did you why did you put that there? Cause I'm down for mine. The motherfucking family, Wood Street, 23rd. I'm down for mine. Wood Street trip, 23rd for life. Ten long to your left in the tight. Everybody catch your rope for the and um Emma. Add up. What I've learned is it ain't gonna never end. Really, never. They got their mind based on all the blacks killing each other, but they're not looking over at the whites. It's not just us killing each other, it's everybody killing one, just killing each other. If you look at the news, people killing each other every day. With small family members killing each other for money. We just killing each other for. I don't know. You know, as my job as the county coroner, that was really how I became interested in this. I started studying it and tracking it back in 86 and uh, been called everything in, in the book, hysterical and ahysteric about it coming. But what I saw in other communities as I was traveling around learning about homicide investigation, I saw coming here. And, and it was really kind of strange that it could be coming to a place like Little Rock, Pulaski County, Arkansas. But it... When it hit here, it hit with the power of a sledgehammer. The way to solve the problem ain't sitting around waiting for somebody else to do it. And I decided to take these pictures, these photographs of these victims, and just go and talk to these kids in the hood. You got shot three times? Yes. What was it they shot you with, do you know? Uh, they were shooting a, uh, what you call it, some? 25? Uh, sawed off, sawed off. Oh, shotgun? Yeah, they caught me with some buck shots. You know, I, for 20 years I've been picking up dead bodies, but the last five years, the bodies I've been picking up are babies. How y'all get the pictures? Like? Most of these kids that are doing this are pretty intelligent kids, and they know that they have a hopeless existence. I think all you got to do is look at some of the conditions that they're born into, and and uh, it's not easy. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. See, I'm the county coroner. That's what my job is. Kenneth Wells, I know him. Oh, Kilo. My buddy. Yep. Kilo's your buddy? Yep. Three. See that, G? That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I ain't no gun. Well, you got to put the guns down. Three. You know, I know you're going to... Four. I know Eric Hill. He do go attack. Yep, of a girlfriend. I know six. Six of them? Yep. And you're 15? Yep. 